Good morning, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and we're nearing the end. We are on day six of Seven and Seven, where we were taking seven rolls of found film, showcasing one roll every day for seven days, and we're on day six. I'm excited about this day because it's something totally different than what we usually do. So what do I mean by totally different? Well, if you followed the series so far, you know that we are at Ektachrome 7240. It's a VNF process film, which was video news film. It was made for sort of filming and then quick developing uh, back in the day. This particular uh, film was discontinued some years ago. Uh, and I was excited to get started with this. Now I've got three rolls out of this particular lot. They were all fully exposed. I thought one was partial, so I put it in my camera and I started filming and I think I got four or five feet out of it for myself. So this is one of the rolls that wasn't partially exposed. It was fully. Had a little number three on the front of it here. I think the other one may have had a number two. I don't know why I did it out of order, but anyway. So I did some tests. My buddy Joel there, he, uh, he recommended, and he was right, that I do some snip tests and try some color. Uh, I was thinking about black and white with this because I typically get pretty good results at a black and white negative with uh, Ektachrome. Uh, but I've never tried it with 7240 or with the old VNF style film. So I did three different tests with that previous roll that I spoke about a minute ago. How proper am I spoke about? Uh, that I talked about a couple of seconds ago. And my test showed, settle down, that black and white was not the way to go. I then did a test with E6. Yeah, that wasn't the way to go either. I, it, that was the funkiest result I've ever gotten from an E6. Now. With that said, it might be because my E6 chemicals are really old and maybe even starting to get on the exhausted side of things. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, I decided to try something different. I looked on all over on the internet and really couldn't find anywhere where people were talking about any other cross-processing for this other than E6, and there really wasn't a lot of talk about that either. So... Uh, in one of my searches, I found a document by Kodak where they recommend that you do not process this film in ECN2. And they say because the archival life of it, or so, I, I don't remember exactly, but uh, the, the magenta colors will shift quickly. And so if you are going to do ECN2, make sure you transfer it to a, an archival or digital format soon um, because they're of a stabilizer issue and whatnot. I transfer it pretty much an hour after it's been processed, so I wasn't overly concerned about that. And anytime Kodak says, well, you shouldn't do this, that typically means it's possible. So I decided to try it in ECN2. Now, this is a reversal film, so it was meant to be a positive image when you were done with your VNF processing. ECN2 is a negative process, so I expected it to be a negative when I was finished with it. And it is a negative. So I tried ECN2 and the results were, well, pretty darn good, if I have to say so myself. And I do have to say so myself because there's no one else here. Um, so I decided I'm gonna do ECN2. And I did it, I finished that roll, and I may show you the, the, that roll later. I decided to keep that out of the seven and seven, but I'll probably show that one later. But I went ahead and did this full, fully exposed roll in ECN2. Now here's the thing, this does have an edge code. This particular roll of film was manufactured per Kodak's website in 2002. The edge code is a square, a circle, and a square. Um, nothing wildly inappropriate about the film itself. For this particular episode, I'm going to forego my typical montage that I use on every episode because that montage is for my black and white negative process with Remjet and, and all my black and white chemicals and whatnot. There's no Remjet, first and foremost, on this film. Uh, I think that would have been counterproductive for in-the-field work when you need to process it quickly and deal with the Remjet. So that was a big plus for me. I did get this roll of film and two just like it from 
Ross, California. I got this film fairly recently, the end of last year, so it's been sitting in my freezer for that amount of time. Two or three months, no big deal. Uh, without a whole lot more of this, we're going to show you the film. The colors are a little off, they're a little muted, they're a little, well, I'm not going to get too much into it. I'll show you the film, we'll be right back to talk about it. Here it is. Pretty interesting, huh? It's different than anything we've really ever had here on Found Film. And I like it because it's unexpected. We, we don't know what we're going to get when we process this old film. Clearly, it's somebody driving over a bridge. I know somebody out there is going to know where this is. I don't know where it's at. It's a big city. Uh, the first part of it is driving over a bridge, and you see this sort of the skyline. And the second part of it is some sort of protest or, or, or demonstration or whatnot. I saw a sign that said no war and peace. So I don't know what the demonstration was about. There's lots of police. There's a couple people getting arrested. It is what it is. There's demonstrations and protests all the time. Maybe you know what it is. Maybe you know what it's from. My guess, there's a, a one of the signs you can almost make out the, 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 the year 2000, but then sort of it's cut off. So again, maybe you know what it is. Maybe you know where it's from. But aside from that, the colors, they're not terrible. I, I kind of like doing this film now in ECN2, or at least doing some more tests with it. This was my homebrew recipe. Uh, I know some people are asking for a full breakdown of the whole ECN2 process. I do promise you that that's going to come soon, and maybe not soon like my K3 
conversion to Super 16 that I kept saying soon, and it took months and months and months. Hopefully sooner than that. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. That was fun for me. It was definitely something different. I can't wait to do the last roll and see what we may have on that. And I also can't wait till tomorrow. It's our last roll of film, which is a little, you know, disheartening, but we have tons more found film coming even after tomorrow, but it just won't be consecutive because... <sighs> anyway, the last roll tomorrow, be ready. It's sound film. It's ectochrome 160 type A. And it comes from, ooh, where are we at here? New London, Wisconsin. We did a roll of this, so tomorrow, on tomorrow's episode, I'll put the little thing up here so you can be reminded of what the previous roll out of this batch was. Uh, and if you like this kind of thing, how about tap that like button for me? It's absolutely cost free. That means it doesn't cost anything. It's free to do it. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Not only of this, but what do you think of my results for this uh, VNF1 process, processed in ECN2 chemicals? I like it. If you feel like I've earned it, how about subscribe for me so you don't miss anything in the future? I do this a lot. I'm sort of a hands-on kind of a hands-in-the-air kind of a guy. Uh, uh, subscribe. And until the very next time that I see each and every one of you beautiful people, even though I can't really see you, I could picture you. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'll see all of you on the very next go-around.